All right, so let's talk about a bomb calorimeter. Um, a bomb calorimeters are used, they're instruments used in chemistry, and they're used for measuring an energy released in a combustion reaction. So we know that combustion reactions are extremely exothermic, meaning they release a lot of heat when they, when they go forward. So how do we know how much heat they actually do release? Well, we have this thing called a bomb calorimeter, and this is a very simple drawing of what one looks like. And essentially what happens is we have inside the bomb calorimeter, we have a reaction um, that's contained within uh, a water bath. And so the reaction is going to take place, the combustion reaction is going to release a lot of energy. Notice the, the red around it saying energy, energy, energy. And what that energy is going to do, according to the law of conservation of energy, it's going to, the same amount of energy that's released is going to be absorbed by the water surrounding it. So we can actually uh, determine the amount of energy that this reaction is actually releasing by looking at the temperature change of the water. All right, so let's put this into practice. So we have... Um, a glucose molecule and it's reacting with oxygen. It's a com simple combustion reaction. And we're producing carbon dioxide and water. And <clears throat> we have found that it, um, when, this, when this reaction happens, for every one mole of, of uh, glucose that, is, that combusts, it produces negative or produces 2,808 2, kilojoules of energy. Okay, so what should I expect if I put, um, if I have 50 grams of water in the calorimeter? So I have 50 grams in here of water, and then I have 54 grams of glucose. How much energy should I expect, or how much, how much should this water heat up if this is the true reaction and the true um, change of energy or change of enthalpy? So let's actually do this together. Okay. Um, well, the first thing I want to know is, I know for one mole of glucose, it releases 2,808 kilojoules of heat, but I don't have one mole. I have 54 grams. Well, how many moles is that? Let's figure that out. So I'm going to say 54 grams of glucose. I'm going to convert that to moles by looking at the molar mass, and I know that's 180. So for every one mole, it's 100. Oops, sorry about that. 180 grams. And so I know that I have. Um, excuse me. I know that I have 0 .0, 0.3 moles of glucose. Not one mole. I have 0 .03. Point, 0.3 moles of glucose. So how much energy should be released? So I'm going to multiply it by um, the, what, the, the unit for one mole, which is 2,808 kilojoules. And that should be um, 842.4 kilojoules. Okay. Um, but again, notice that we, I like things in joules because now I'm going to go into, um, I'm going to convert this to joules and I'll show you in just a, just a reason why for a second. Um, so my environment of converting this to joules, I have, uh, I'm moving the decimal point over three places. So one, two, three. So eight, four, two, four, zero, zero joules. Okay. So this is how much energy is released from this reaction if I have 54 grams of glucose. But now I want to know how much energy, how much, um, heat is going to be released from this water. So this is the energy that's released from the reaction, which is also going to be equal, it's also going to be the same as the energy absorbed by the water. Because the law of conservation of energy states that the energy released is going to be the amount of energy. We can't lose any energy in any, anywhere. Um, absorbed. Okay. So if we know, uh, we want to find the, the temperature change, I'm going to have to go to my specific heat equation. My specific heat equation, remember, is Q equals mc delta T. Okay, so this is a Q for the water um, that is absorbed. The water is going to absorb this much. The mass of the water is 50 grams. The specific heat of water, if you don't, um, to remember, is 4.184 uh, joules per gram degree Celsius. And this is the reason why I had to convert to joules, because my specific heat is in measurement of joules. So I want to make sure that my um, energy is also in joules. So it's 4.184 joules per gram degree Celsius. Units are really important in this case. And I want to figure out the temperature change. So I'm just going to say delta T. OK, so I'm, I multiply these two together and divide it by um, 842,400. And I get 4. 3 degrees Celsius. That's my temperature change. Now I want to figure out the final temperature. So my initial temperature was 25 degrees Celsius. Is it going to get increase in temperature or decrease in temperature? Well, the reaction that is going on inside is releasing energy. That means it's going to increase in temperature. So the water is going to um, go up. So I initially started at 25 degrees Celsius and went up by 4 degrees Celsius. So 25 plus 4 is going to equal 29 
0.03 degrees Celsius, which is my final temperature of the water. And if that were the case, um, then the temp then the, we can agree that this is a, this is a true reaction. That it for every mole of glucose that decomposes or combusts, you're going to give off 2,808 kilojoules, and this would prove that. Um, now we know that if we were to put this in practice, this actually might not be, you might not get this, you're gonna get some error. And why is the error? Well, if you look back at the, rea at the chamber, at the bomb calorimeter, the reaction um, is gonna release some energy, but it's gonna be absorbed by several things within the bomb calorimeter, probably the container that the reaction is, is in, the water also, and then also the calorimeter itself. So there are, it might not go um, increase the temperature of the water exactly that, but that's because of water, the energy is being absorbed by other things. But just remember that energy cannot be created or destroyed according to the law of conservation of energy, and this should prove that.